Welcome to the Core Concepts Lecture Series. I'm your host, James Renford Powell, and this is where we have religious and spiritual leaders come and tell us what they believe, why they believe it, and what they're doing about it. In other words, how did they come to that belief system, and how is it manifesting in their lives? This week we have something a little bit different. You don't always have to be a church or religious organization or discipline to provide assistance to people in spiritual growth. And our guest this week is Richard Irwin. This is from the Irwin Hypnosis Center in Bartlett, Tennessee. And uh, you'll be able to contact him, I'll tell you right now, by going to the IrwinHypnosisCenter.com. Right? E-R-V-I-N, HypnosisCenter.com. And E-R-V-I-N what? Uh, the email address? It would R.P. Irvin. R.P. Irvin. At BellSouth.net. Or you can just go to the website, IrwinHypnosisCenter.com. Okay. Send me an email. And uh, Richard is going to be talking today about how he has assisted people in the process of reaching their objectives, both mentally, physically, and spiritually, and um, in solving, resolving problems. Uh, welcome to the, Thank to the you. program Thank today. You. Thank you for having me. Just, uh, if you would, could you begin by just telling us a little bit about the center and how you've developed so far? We've been in practice for the public since 2007. And this is, I'm in my third office now, and it's by far the largest one had to grow into it. Mm -hmm. uh, we do all manner of hypnosis over there. Uh, and we touch on all the subjects that you just, you just mm -hmm. described. Uh, we get people in for a variety of different things. Standard addiction issues, uh, cigarettes, uh, alcohol, things like that. We also get people for performance enhancement as far as sports or mental performance enhancement. We get a lot of people for uh, memory, concentration, test taking things. A lot of children, a lot of adults. I've had people come in for, uh, I've had little kids come in for their grades. And I've also had a number of people come in to uh, take some of the licensure exams that different mm -hmm. jobs have. Big ones like nurse anesthetists and nurse practitioners and things like that. Some really, really tough exams. My wife used to train uh, people to uh, pass the uh, customs broker's exam, which is somewhat like, uh, maybe not as quite as difficult as a CPA exam, but it's very, very tough because you've got all the stacks and stacks of regulations and you you no way to learn them all. You have to know how to get to them. That's right. And uh, I think uh, some people have just a fear of any kind of examination, don't they? Great, there's a great deal of fear of examination because they haven't been able to change their mindset. I had, I was afraid of examinations when I was very young, and fortunately, and I have no idea how I was able to do it. But I, what I, I changed it from a test to a challenge. Everybody's up for a challenge. They may not be up for a test, but a challenge. Yeah. Oh yeah, you say I can't do that. Well, hide and watch me. You know, there are people. And I just I changed the way that I looked at it. With clients during doing test taking, what we do is we try to uh, give them in hypnosis. We give them some rash, really rational ways of, of taking tests. Uh, also, we concentrate on their study method. The way and people can people can become very very focused if they actually practice it. And I, and I, that's one of the one of the sessions that I provide a uh, reinforcement CD for. And that's a good thing because it gives them a, a lot of practice at it. Eventually it becomes pretty much rote. You know, you know, study, study habits like that. Just intense focus. Could you, uh, could you tell our viewers just what actually takes place in the mind when you do, when, when a hypnosis takes place? Because a lot of people think of it as a, a parlor game. I can give I can give them a everybody everybody goes in and out of hypnosis several times a day. They're just usually not quite as deep as as they do at the office. Uh, at night when you go to sleep, as your brainwave activity is slowing up, just before you drop drop down into sleep, you transition through a hypnagogic state. Everybody does that if you sleep. And in the morning, it's reverse of that. Your brainwave activity is accelerating, and you 
pass it through that before you build normal consciousness. The one in the morning, I think, for Americans is probably the most illustrative because a lot of Americans use alarm clocks. When the alarm clock goes off, you can hear it. You heard the alarm clock go off. You reach over and see the slap snooze button. You need two more minutes, please. Two more minutes. That's all I need. Just two more minutes. You're laying there, you're heavy, you feel very heavy. Your body does not feel exactly the way it does in normal consciousness. You're heavy, comfortable, and relaxed. You can hear, that's a salient feature of it. You can hear, and you can move if you turn the alarm clock off. That's, I think for most Americans, that's the second hit in the godic state of the night. Just before they start accelerating the normal activity. Uh, but there are quite a number of instances of trance in everyday life. Uh, anything you do on autopilot, you really don't think about. You're driving. <laughs> driving is one of the big ones, especially long distances. You're in trance. We have an amazing facility for that. If you stop to consider it, it's, it's fortunate that we have that because probably 90 to 98% of our activities are without conscious thought. And if we had to think, it's a large number. If you stop, stop to look at it, though, it's, it's, it's a true number. It's true. The, uh, but what happens, because we've got a subconscious mind somewhere in there, it takes care of the normal, everyday routine things so we don't have to think about them. Now, if we had to think about all these things, we would never get some of the higher order functions accomplished. The fact that we've got such an amazing you know, the cerebrum is so, it's so huge in homo sapiens. The outer part of the cortex is where the activity is at, as far as the higher order stuff goes on. The inside of it takes care of all the things that, you know, autonomic. walking, breathing, autonomic. all the autonomic things. Thank goodness for that, because if we had to worry about, that, or, or knitting, or, or mowing grass, or driving a car, if we had to think about these things, we wouldn't be able to do logic. There would be no place for it. Logic? What's logic? There'd be no analytical. No, nothing analytical whatsoever. Um, when um, I know in some, some dream interpretation, people uh, mm -hmm. talk about the fact that every time you go to sleep, every time you, you dream, you're literally going out of body. Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, and they talk about out of body experiences and so forth. And I know that. On occasion, I've had dreams where I would, or when I would wake up, it's if I'd been in some kind of conference all night. I mean, I had a whole plane. It wasn't an idea. I got up. I had to work to get all this laid out. Right. Uh, how does that connect up with hypnosis work? There's a, a big correlation. You can get exhausted from that kind of thing. You can wake up exhausted mm -hmm. Certainly from can. that experience. You can. You sure, you sure can. Mm -hmm. uh, but are you doing something like that in the hypnosis? Are you working with like like a counselor? I believe. Uh, like, well, I don't do the counseling, but what I do is what I do is offer a variety of suggestions to help a person do whatever it is they're trying to achieve, and we do it a lot of different ways. But in hypnosis, I believe that you have a direct line to genius. I believe. I really believe that because the. the critical factor, the part of you that's listening to me right now, the analytical part, you know, it's like it's like a sieve, it's like so. And, and, you, and throughout your lifetime, you continue to develop this critical factor. Well, I believe that, I don't believe that, that that's possible. If, it's, if you believe it, you shoot through the sieve, so to speak, and get shot back to the subconscious mind, and after that, it's used pretty much forever for judgment and different things like that. Well, Pulling it up and when and at night, and at, at night, this thing's wide open because your your conscious mind hopefully is taking a siesta, mm -hmm. and all these ideas and thoughts and sim symbols percolate to the surface. Now, some of it's psychic trash. Some of it's from eating I've had much. a bad, <laughs> too much, a, a bit of bad undigested beef or, or yeah. Uh, yeah, some of the psychic trash. Other parts of it, now if you're working on a really handy problem, and if you task your mind prior to, prior to sleep, you know, I really need, a, I need an answer to this. Mm -hmm. Go to bed and sleep on it. Well, quite frequently the answer will appear. 
And there have been a lot of different things, a lot of scientific discoveries done in moments like this. And it's all related to hypnosis because you are in the same altered state of consciousness. Because that's exactly what it is, it's an altered state of consciousness. A fortunate one. But yeah, it's, it's, it's related. You can, you can call it forth. I do, I do sessions for creativity. I work with musicians. I work with, I've worked with scientists. I've worked with just a, a myriad of people. You want to be more creative? Yeah, you can turn that thing loose. You right. have control over it. People mm -hmm. say they don't control. You have very little control over your mind. That's not exactly the case. You can take control of it. I was just wondering because a lot of times uh, people say they don't dream. They can't remember having dreams. And of course, they had to dream, or they'd probably be in bother. Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so, uh, but we we have a tendency to forget that. Do do do, uh, do does the patient or the person working with you in hypnosis do, do they remember what what, what happened? You're talking about what happened in hypnosis? Mm -hmm. There's a thing called amnesia for the event that will occur at very very deep levels of hypnosis. If, if a person goes into a theta state, they're not going to remember a word that I said. But it means, mm -hmm. as far as the, the process is concerned, it makes no difference. Because if they consciously remember it, that's okay. If they don't consciously remember it, it's okay, okay also. Because that's not the part of their head that I'm working with. Mm -hmm. I'm working with the subconscious. So you may not even know what level they're in. No, I know exactly. Oh, you do? Yeah, because yeah. Yeah. I test. Mm -hmm. No, I know where they're at. I say exactly. It's in some respects, it's an exact science because it's not like I got some somebody hooked up to an EEG machine. <laughs> okay, he's here now. But I do tests, and so I know. Say, for example, we needed, say we needed anesthesia, and I can achieve anesthesia. But and that's not one of the things that you want to test somebody on. Let's stick a needle in him to see if he's there yeah. yet. You know, is he done yet? No. Go ahead and open up. Open yeah. him up. Yeah, open him up. <laughs> no, no. I, so I, there are tests, and if you know. Is the two and a half on a six scale. I use an Aaron scale for depth. It's very simple and it works well for what I do in the office. But if you get a two and a half or a three, I can pinch you, I can do all sorts of things, and, and you will not feel it. You won't feel it. You just sit there and smile. We could extract teeth. Not that I'm going into the dental business, but you can extract teeth with that, and I've seen it done. I've seen some major surgery done with the, with the client. Conscious and speaking, but in hypnosis, it's an altered state. Mm -hmm. You can speak. I can have you can get up and walk around. You can write. There's all all manner of things you can do. We can regress you back to Christmas at five years old. I've done that before, a bunch of times. Uh, if I can induce positive or negative hallucinations, there's a there's a raft of phenomena that can be used specifically to help a person with it. And speaking of regression, how do you typically go back? Uh, do you do you have a lot of regression type of uh, clientele? I I use regression as a last resort because I, I'm I'm very well trained in it, mm -hmm. and it's an extremely powerful tool. But it's also the most complicated hypnotic intervention that a person can undertake. I have seen regressions that were so complicated that you almost had to have a stenographer in there with you. It was, was it, almost entirely too, too was complicated. Was it dangerous or was it, not just, dangerous. was it just a matter of jumping around in different areas of time? No, it's just there are so many, so many areas of a, person, of a, of a person's personality are, are opened up. It's in the depth. Of the, it's the depth it's, level. You get so much information built for coming from so many different places that it's difficult to call for, 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 the, for the for the patient to actually express for the himself. No, the, the, the client has no problem. The client, mm -hmm. the clients, it's, it's not, a, not an issue for the client. It's an issue for the operator. It's an issue for mm -hmm. the hypnotist. But uh, no, because, why is that? What, what is he? What because is you it? can open up. You might have a dozen different facets of the person's personality, and they may all be answering to a different name. This one over here could be the race car driver, this could be the cook, this one, and, they can, and it sounds like a person is going schizophrenic, but it's not true. That's just the way people organize. It. People's is, is that an aspect of past lives or an aspect of just... That's this life. 
with the same <laughs> This life. is life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everybody, everybody's got different parts of them. You know, you've got the, the, the gym pal that writes. You've got the gym pal that drives your car. You've got the gym pal that cuts grass and does these things. You know? The problem is not to be right when I'm driving, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. You, no that's a problem. <laughs> that's a problem because people, I think... People are doing it. <laughs> that's, a, that's a real problem. They're not writing anything. But the uh, uh, regressions can become extremely complicated. That's why when people come in there, and people come in and say, well, I a lot of times clients say, I think we're going to have to get to the bottom of this and find the, 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 the initial event that caused all this. I said, no, no. Because the first thing I'll tell them, did it hurt then? And they'll say, oh yeah, it was very painful. Do you really want to go back there and pull that scab right. off? You want to go back and experience <laughs> you really it want again? To, you want to go back and experience it again? Because we can do that. There are other ways of doing it. There are other ways of achieving the same results. And I do it. I do it with Ericksonian methods which essentially are telling little stories, kind of like parables from the Bible. Mm -hmm. Subconscious mind takes these things and runs with them. Wow, that's what I needed out of that. Same thing with direct or indirect suggestions. You can, you know, you can do it now, you can do it later. It'd be nice if you did it now. And things mm -hmm. like that and put them in a bind. There's a, there's, a, there's a lot of different ways to do that. Use NLP, you can use uh, neuro linguistic programming in well in classes. Just as easy, easier than you can do it in conscious state. Well, your typical, uh, the typical client that's coming in is trying to stop smoking, right. or trying to stop eating, or lose weight, or, 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 or typically, or something physical. It's usually smoking. Yeah, but she, but it is normally phys, physical, but sometimes not. Now, what about people who are on a spiritual path? And they're looking to achieve some objective that way. Could you tell us about that kind of situation? I've, I have a session specifically for that. It's called a higher power guidance session, where you can conceivably, at least I believe, speak to somewhere other than inside your head. Because I believe it comes from somewhere external to you. Now, some people would argue that it's your higher self talking. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. There may be instances where your higher self does speak, but I believe it comes from somewhere else. I don't know if it's angels, spirit guides, God. I don't know. Choose one of the above. The force. Uh, but I can tell you right now, the ones that I've done. The personality that comes out is not the personality of the person that's, that you're working with. It's, it's so it's a channeling type of it's, situation. Yes, it is, and you're doing it for yourself. It is a channeling type of situation. It's not dangerous or anything like that. There's nothing. There's nothing. There, there's not a whole lot about what I do is dangerous unless you trip coming into the office. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not dangerous. It's not what hurt you. It's good for you. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do it if it was dangerous. Uh, on that spiritual level, would you talk about that some more? Um, I, I'd just like to hear some more about what happens to the person, or what were they seeking when they came? Or we, we go over some questions, mm -hmm. and they bring questions with them, and we go over them. And I'll, I'll clarify what, what we're trying to find out. And then work and work and work and work and give them a good deep hypnosis and speak to this part or where, wherever this person is, wherever this being is, and speak. And, and, and sometimes you get a lot more out of it than, than what you ask because it'll get, they, there's a lot of information in there. Sometimes they don't even, they don't even talk like the person. And they're, and I'm not going to say that their face changes and things like that, like in some of the channeling things, but they don't talk like the person that I'm working with. I've seen that in channeling where the face doesn't even look the same. <laughs> I've, I've, I've seen it too. I haven't seen it in hypnosis yet, but it's, it's probably, now that we've, we've said something about it, the next one is I do, it'll happen. <laughs> I wish I had the video camera running on that one. Wow, look at this. Uh, but, yeah, that's how we'll do it. We, we, Get some questions to begin with. Try to get try to get all those answered. If they will, once in a while they'll say, "Well, 
you know, they'll draw the line because apparently there's there's limits on what that they'll what they'll say. And, and I don't know whether I don't know whether it's physical laws or spiritual laws, but there's there's there are the laws that govern what goes on. That some of them we just don't know. Are some of those clients say conflicted about uh, the way that the religion they were brought up in, as opposed to where what they're thinking now? I, I run into a lot of people like that. And they'll, and they're almost universally, they almost universally tell you the same thing. It's almost the same story each time. I, I run into a bunch of people like that. They seem to be evolving at a higher pace, and, it, and it's, and it's multicultural. It's not any one particular culture. It can be, and it's, it's quite surprising. It, it can be any, any culture, and humans, humans. Any culture and any religion. They, they pop up and they've got the same story. Which is, yes. which is, which is, my beliefs have changed. This has happened to me over the last couple of years. My family no longer accepts, you know, and I can't talk to my family about this. Am I going crazy? Mm -hmm. No, you're not going crazy. You can't see me. That's, <laughs> that's obvious side that you're not crazy. <laughs> no, but that's 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 some of the key. The say that they're yeah. evolving. There are a lot of people that are coming online, so to speak. In the last two or three years, it's, it's, I've seen a bunch of them. They, they wind up over my office for a variety of different things. Now, out of your office, you provide quite a lot more. That I mean, you, your 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 focus is on hypnosis to help focus, them. The focus, is, the focus is help them succeed in whatever it is they're trying to do. If it's within my realm of expertise. And a lot of it is because just about anything that you can think of that has an emotional or a psychological component can be addressed with hypnosis. Strange things, things that you wouldn't even think. Skin disorders. I work with people with skin disorders. Now, why would you think that they would have, have a, some type of a psychological basis? But they often do. Irritable bowel syndrome. I believe that we can work on people with Crohn's disease. However, I haven't done it yet. But I think it, I believe it, it's addressable. There's a number of things. High blood pressure. I, work, I, I wouldn't work on a client for that, but I work on myself. Mm -hmm. My blood pressure is normal. It didn't used to be. Well, you could provide a formula for them without saying this is this well, is high blood pressure medicine. I'm giving. That's exactly right. That's <laughs> exactly right. What I and what I'm I'm thinking very seriously about doing. And if anybody's interested in this, I wish you'd contact me. I'm, I'm in the process of putting together a self hypnosis class. Mm -hmm. And that would be an issue you could address on your own. Mm -hmm. Because obviously you're not going to sue yourself. If your head blows up, it's your own problem, you know. But I, I, I'm thinking very seriously about putting together a self-hypnosis class. If there's anybody out there that's interested in this, drop me in line. Now you already have CDs that you produced that work in the area of self-hypnosis, do they not? They will. The reinforcement CDs that I use are usually they're item specific as far as, you know, if I'm working for a person with irrational fears, I've got one for irrational fears. They're very, very specific. I've got a few that could be used, you know, on a generic basis where, you know, would help you with that. But the, ideally, the client, the person should learn how to do it to himself. It's really not difficult. And I've got a bunch of different methods. That one, one size doesn't necessarily fit all, but there are a number of methods available for that. And, I, and that's what I want to teach. I want to teach. And that they learn how to go to these levels themselves. They can sit down and count to ten backwards or whatever whatever system that you yeah. provide to do that. Yeah, and, and then learn how to deepen it, learn how, how to bring themselves back out of it. Learn how to craft some elementary suggestions. I don't recommend that you work on yourself for something that's got, that is extremely difficult. Simple things. I need more confidence. I need, I need, I need to look this way. You know, things you can do, use some creative visualization and different things like that. I don't recommend that you, if you've got irrational fears, or if you need to lose, a, you know, lose a bunch of weight, or if I would even try to quit smoking. There's okay. a lot to it. There's, there's a lot to it. It looks simple, but it's not simple. Those those habits get so deeply ingrained that it's like uh, extracting down. And I'll tell you this. Oh, it is like <laughs> out. 
But I'll say this, my success rate with one session for smoking is 70%. Mm. That's pretty good. That's very good. We could take that to a couple of wave millionaires. We'd have a heck of a party this evening if we had those kind of odds. Could you tell us a little bit about some of the auxiliary things that go on at the Irwin Hypnosis Center, maybe Martha the, yeah. is directing or some of the others are directing? We have uh, at least twice monthly bow meditations on the full moon and on the, on the new moon where they, uh, the ladies play crystal balls and uh, various and sundry acoustic uh, instruments. We have uh, guest lecturers several times a year. Several times a year. There's always something going on. You can go to, uh, there's a website, it's called Sacred Gathering Heart, H E A R T. SacredGathering-Heart.com, uh, and there's an entire list. There's a, there's a calendar of the events that are happening at the center, other than hypnosis. And that again, that's at UrbanHypnosisCenter.com. Urban, go to UrbanHypnosisCenter.com if you got any questions. E R V I N HypnosisCenter.com if you got any questions. Just drop me a line, and if you if if there's something, if you've got if you don't know if hypnosis will operate on, on your on your issue, drop me a line and I'll let you know. More than likely, yes, and more than likely, I've probably worked on it already. Now, uh, you uh, are prepared today to do about a ten-minute uh, uh, demonstration. demonstration. Yes, sir. I and I believe we have a volunteer and Julie Dennis. Julie, Julie. Oh, Dennis. Did I do that? And could we just swap <laughs> chairs there, and uh, oh, yeah. or you want her to come over here? Where do you want her? I can have her. Sit anywhere. But okay. I mean, actually, actually, it would probably be better if I if I sit here next to her. Okay. So I can, that way I can work with her somewhat easier. Just put me on the floor. Okay, Julie, Julie, you want to take your glasses off, or you want to leave them on? There we go. Where you're going, you've got perfect vision. Yeah. Okay. Just sort of sit back. Close your eyes. Just remember, the only thing that you've got to do is just listen to the sound of my voice and want your eyes to stay closed for just a little while. And then shortly after that, they'll stay closed on their own. It's not like you can't open your eyes. You could if the fire alarm went off in here. you open them really quickly. All right, just begin to relax. Relax all those muscles in your face, your cheeks, your mouth, and your jaw. Just relax all those muscles in your face. Pay particular attention those tiny, tiny muscles that surround your eyes and your eyelids. Heavy, so heavy, too heavy to move a single heavy muscle, just like at night when you're deep, deep asleep. And when you relax those eyelids so very much, when you've relaxed them so much that you're absolutely sure that they just won't function, when you've relaxed your eyes so much that you know that they just won't work, I would like for you to attempt to open your eyes, but we want them to remain closed. That's good. Just give them a good hard tug. That's good. Thank you. You're doing very well. So long as you listen to the sound of my voice, all these thoughts and ideas and suggestions will go deep, deep, deep in your subconscious mind. You listen to the sound of my voice, and the sound of my voice is calm and soothing, and all other sounds are distant and unimportant and all other sounds just cause you to go deeper and deeper in drowsy slumber. Now in just a moment when I ask you to, Julie, I'm going to have you open your eyes just a little bit. Open your eyes just a little bit. Now close them back down and relax ten times as deeply as you are where you are. Deeper and deeper. Relax now. Once again, open your eyes just a bit. That's going to close them back down and relax twice as much with every gentle breath that you take, every beat of your heart. You just relax more and more deeply, more and more deeply relax. Now one more time, open them just a little bit, close them back down. And just allow yourself to feel that relaxation from the top of your head right down through the tips of your toes. 
completely relaxed, totally at ease. You're listening only to the sound of my voice. Now you've relaxed your body, and I'm going to tell you how you can relax your mind even further. Listen carefully. When I ask you to, I would like for you to begin counting backwards from 100. You count very slowly, out loud, saying 100, 99, 98, and so forth. By the time you get to number 96, you'll find that all these numbers are becoming vague, hazy, and confused. You'll find that your mind has become so very relaxed that you simply relax all these numbers right out of your mind. Just let the numbers relax and just allow them to disappear. Get ready now. Three, two, one. Begin counting. 100. Very slowly. 99. Deeper and deeper relax. 98. Deeper and deeper relax. 97. With every number that you count, you just relax more and more. 96. Now we make those numbers disappear. Are they going now? You can nod your head. Excellent. You've relaxed your body and you've relaxed your mind. Going to a much, much deeper state of hypnosis, listening only to the sound of my voice. But you can relax even more deeply. I'm going to count from five down to one, and as I do, you can either double this level of relaxation, or if you wish, you can become ten times as relaxed as you already are. Five. Every muscle and nerve body is loose. Limp. And relax. Four. All the cares of the day are left far behind you now. And all there is is the heavy Total relaxation, growing stronger and stronger now. Number two, so very near that special learning place. On the next number, with the count of one, and with the words, sleep deeply. Just feel a wave of relaxation throughout your entire body as you just let go and double this level. Now number one, and see the Relax. Relax and just let go. It's a wonderful feeling to just let go. I would like for you to just take a minute with me now and see, picture, or just imagine that you are standing on a beautiful beach. Feel the warm sand beneath your feet. Temperature is absolutely perfect. A slight breeze blowing. And watch the gentle waves coming in and going out. Walk up to where the waves just touch the tips of your toes. When the waves touch the tips of your toes, you feel a wonderful feeling throughout your entire body. And you wait for the next wave to come in. And this time the wave gently washes over the tops of your feet and it charges your body with a tremendous sensation. And you feel absolutely great. feeling of confidence and self-esteem that you can carry with you into every situation in your life. Every single one. And you wonder, did the ocean give you this power? Or did it simply switch on something that was already there? And I would like for you to just take a minute and imagine, see yourself the way you want to be. Completely confident total self-esteem. See yourself in every detail.
exactly the way that you want to be. Get it, that picture firm in your mind. You have within you the ability to handle any situation that may ever occur in your life. And you already have plenty of self-confidence. And at this point, all we're doing is increasing the amount of self-confidence and self-esteem that you already have. There's nothing in the past, existing now in the present, or ever to come in the future that could possibly hold you back from being successful. Nothing can stop you now. And beginning right now and continuing over the next few days, weeks, months, possibly years, the color red is becoming brighter, sharper, much more distinct. The color red could be the color of a stop sign. The color red could be the color of a tail light of a car. The color red could be the color of a piece of clothing. The color red could be as small as a lady's fingernail polish or as big as a billboard. Every time you see the color red, 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 your self-confidence and self-esteem will increase. You will not have to look for the color red. Your perfect, powerful subconscious mind will discover it for you automatically. Now in a moment I'm going to count from one to five. We'll very slowly, calmly, gently return to full awareness at the count of five, feeling absolutely great. Realizing that you've had a very important, relaxing experience here today. And that you are liked, loved, appreciated, and respected by everybody who truly knows you. But most importantly, by yourself. One. Very slowly, very calmly, very, very gently. Begin returning to full awareness once again. Two. From the tips of your toes to the top of your head, you begin to feel a warm, stirring surge of very, very powerful positive energy throughout your entire body. You feel absolutely great. Three. You are physically perfect. You are mentally perfect. You are emotionally perfect. You are beautifully perfect in every way. Four. Your eyes begin to feel as if they've been bathed in cool spring water. Five. Feeling gently returning to your feet and legs. Feeling gently returning to your hands and your arms. When you're listening to the sounds of the room, the sound of my voice. You can take a deep breath and stretch. Fully aware, fully awake. so many, I've done thousands of these things. I've done so many of them, I can just about sense it. Yeah, I, can, I, okay. I, can, I, know what, I know where they're at. And the thing is, it's, it's, it's so very near uh, normal consciousness. 
for some people, they can't. They don't know when they're in hypnosis. You know, and they've got a little questioning thought going on. It's kind of like trying to meditate. And you get a thought comes through your mind. And they have this, well, I don't think I'm hypnotized. Well, I know exactly what they're at. I know when they're hypnotized. But sometimes I'll, I'll convince them of that. No, I'll do something to convince them. They'll make their arm start their arm ro rotating around or something like that. And then, Why is my arm doing this? And it's doing it with its own volition. Things like that. I'll do some things like that. Simple stuff. Yeah, there's, there's a bunch of different ways to find out. Any other questions, Jim? No. Yeah. Thank you for, for volunteering to do that. Oh, That's you're welcome. Good. Thank you. I've had it. I've been hypnotized, but not that deep. And I, I use self-hypnosis all the time. I was too sick this time. Towards the last, I could use some self-hypnosis. Yeah. And then I do a lot of projecting in trance yeah. when friends want are not well. Right. I can do it for other people easier than can do it for myself. <laughs> now, how uh, we have affirmations, and uh, many people use affirmations, and I've used the what I call the Renford affirmations, which uh, deal with each one of the universal laws. I've actually yeah. recorded one of yours. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't given it out to anybody yeah. yet, but I thought. And what we did here in Open Heart uh, Spiritual Center. And uh, John reported a number of cases. He said that was, uh, you know, that there was uh, people who got jobs and people who found relationships and one thing or another. And then they didn't, I don't ask them to uh, 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 light a candle or pray or do anything. Just read it first thing in the morning, last thing at night. That's all. And, and, and then come back and tell me nothing happened. Well, you see the power of, of, of yeah. the timing? The timing has got a lot to do with it because they're either either about to go into a, a light state of hypnosis or, they're, right. coming, or they're coming out of one. And the magic 27 is because 2 and 7 are 9 and that's the completion of a, uh, of a cycle. How, how close to uh, hypnosis is them doing the affirmation? Very close. Right. It's very close. It's extremely close. In fact, they probably are using self-hypnosis. If they're... Mm -hmm. If they're in a reverent condition, so to speak, and they're a human will go into trance if they take three good deep breaths with their eyes closed. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's almost universal. It, it might take one or two cycles of that if a person is revved up really good, but I can have them in trance just by taking three good deep breaths with their eyes closed. They'll, they'll, that's, in fact, that's the rudiments of, of the way I can touch myself. So if a person was in a reverent attitude and they were, say they had their mind clear and they were reading the affirmations, yeah, they're in hypnosis. There's no, I have, I have no doubt about it. It just depends on the level there. That's right. Yeah. And, that, and the thing about that, people think that they have to be so deep that it's like, you know, it's, it's deep, so, but you don't have to be. Light hypnosis is tremendously powerful. I coach children. I do, I do life coaching too, but and I coach children to always be careful what they daydream. Because daydreaming is an extremely powerful form of self-hypnosis and these things will come to pass. You make it happen as you go along. And it's so easy to be fear-based in, yes, in your thinking. and, and You're you thinking be... the worst. Well, yeah. what's going to happen? Yeah. Think about what you want. No, not what right. you don't want, but yeah. especially when you're daydreaming, because it's, it, people do not realize how powerful their mind is. Now, I, I, have a, I have a favorite saying, I, I talk about fear as really being the devil. That's the devil you, that you know instead of the little fellow with the long tail and the horns. Yeah. And, and uh, really, in all of these things that you're working on, you're really dealing with fear, aren't you? That's right. And pain, everybody that comes through, comes through my door has the same problem. They're all in pain. And they, they may call it physical pain or mental pain. pain. They may call it cigarette smoking. They may call it, I'm afraid of snakes. They may call it, uh, I'm having a problem with my relationships. Well, they may call it, uh, it could be physical pain. You know, my shoulder won't work right. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're, they're all there for the same reason. They just spell it different. They're all in pain. And fear, fear generates a lot of that stuff. Fear is, if you're not, what? What's the biggest hole anybody's got over, over somebody? Is the fear of death, right? Well, if you're not afraid, nobody has any hold on you. Stop, consider that. The person, the most powerful person in the world is the one who's not afraid to die. 
There's a famous saying that the trappings of death are much worse than death itself. And I think that's addressing that whole question It's, true. Fear. it's yeah. true. Just don't be, don't be afraid. Can we go to the, uh, uh, back to your self-hypnosis yes. program? Right. Uh, is, is that going to be CDs and DVDs and live sessions or what, what, I, it, what is it what going I'm to be? Do, I'm going to uh, put together a class and I'm undecided as to whether it's going to be one or two days. I'm going to put together a class and go uh, just a gamut of different ways of doing this mission, several different ways. And they, all, they don't all work equally well with everybody. Mm -hmm. so, you know, you sort of pick and choose your own way. Uh, and I would give them, I would hypnotize the class because the, the, the easiest way to learn how to do this for yourself is to be hypnotized so you don't have, have an idea of what it feels like. And mm -hmm. It's hard to read a book and learn how to do this because you don't, am I, am I there? Am I there? Well, I can tell you if you're there. You know, if I'm there and I'm hypnotized, you know, okay, you're there. This is what it feels like. Let's feel it. And pretty soon you'll get to know how to shift the consciousness. When your consciousness shifts, you can feel it and tell. I can feel it. I know when I'm in hypnosis. I close my eyes, take take three good deep breaths, and I'm gone. Okay? Because I can feel it. I know what it feels like. I know when my consciousness shifts. When I go into an altered state. And ideally that's what I want the client, want the, the student in the class to, to learn. I think this is what it feels like. Now, as far as practice is concerned, they need to practice that on their own, but I'd also give them a CD so they could, you know, they could use that as a to jump start. It's a two. Yeah, jump start. But you want to get away from that. That's training moves. You get away from that shortly. If you practice it a couple of times a day, you you can take the training moves off shortly. But that's so if you have the C D and then the live show. And then if you have a DVD that explains some bits and parts I could probably, of it, I could probably generate that would be a very powerful program, and I look forward to uh, yeah. to, to seeing that. And, yeah. I'm getting pushed in that direction. I'm getting pushed in that direction. <laughs> yeah. I think you've talked about this before I some time ago. I and, and, uh, She's got to do it into a microphone. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. Uh, I want to ask one more question, and then I'd like I'd like you to uh, uh, give you a few minutes to talk to our viewers about uh, what they can do wherever they are in the world, uh, and if they can contact you. But otherwise, whatever they can do. Uh, I went in in since we this show revolves a lot around the uh, physical, the uh, religious and spiritual disciplines and belief systems, and really in hypnosis we're dealing with belief system. One has to believe. It can be, it can be part of a spiritual system. Right. Really. I'm just wondering if you have any interchange with uh, any religious organizations, or do you have opposition from religious organizations? I have had opposition from uh, some mainstream religious organizations. But I would say this. Even when there was opposition, if the client's problem was, was bad enough, they would still show up. Yeah. Uh, they would still show up. Because if it's bad enough and they're looking for help, they'll still show up. And then I'll convince them, look, this is not... Jesus said go into, a, go, go into your closet and pray, right? Yeah. Well, that, he wasn't talking about going into a little room and closing the door. He was talking about meditating. Yeah. Well, meditation and hypnosis are... Pretty close. Pretty close. So, does your religion does your religion advocate meditate? If it does, then this is not outside of. Why would it be? If if there was something wrong with this, why would we have the ability to do it so easily? And besides that, you run around in it all the time anyway. You run around. People run around in trance 90, 90, 90 percent of the time. So. It's an onboard onboard facility, and if you want to hate an, your onboard facility, you know, that's, go ahead. But that's that's the argument. I, I would well, what is the argument of the religious? Uh, I think it's element. because they, they believe it's the works of the work of the devil, uh, or the devil can get in you somehow, or other when you're in a state. Uh, or you're in a weaker uh, that you're in a weakened state. Yeah. Similar, similar to being, you know, out of control in this. Oh, yeah. it's control. You're out of their control. You're out, you're out of their control is the problem. That's, that's the issue. Yeah. 
you know, you're not taking you're not taking direction from their yeah, they, you know, mouthpiece. Well, it isn't in a way all. Not anything against organized no, religion, no. But, but in a way, bad. all 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 organized religion is a, a matter of control. People control. Yeah. Book yeah. the book religions are. Yeah. If there's a book involved, yeah. it's about it has, it's about people control. And how might someone <coughs> utilize hypnosis to uh, um, to better understand their religion? I would do it, what I would do is I would take a particular question or a, a, second, a Bible passage, write it. There's several different ways of doing this. You can write it, you can record it for yourself, and then do, do self-hypnosis. And essentially what you're doing is you're programming yourself with that particular thing, and, and things will pop up. You will get, you get the information from the Dharma sources and you, you may see images, you may hear, you may hear, you might have something inside your head talk to you about it. No, you're not crazy. That's normal. I mean, it's, you've asked for this. So, you know, what's the meaning of this? Oh, all of a sudden the meaning pops up. It might not be then. It could be a week from now. It might come in a dream. It might come while you're daydreaming. It could happen while you're, while you're driving your car. Listen to your, what's going on in your head when you drive your car because you get a lot of good guidance. You're out of gear. You're out of gear. You're letting it in. The voice can actually get in there. Hey, are you listening? And if it's not speaking loud enough, ask it to speak louder. But yeah, I would write it down. And I would, I would put it in the form of a question or something like that. And then do self-hypnosis and, and either listen to a recording of it. Or I've got, there's other ways. And that's, that would be in the class also. Other ways of, of introducing a suggestion while you're in self-hypnosis. Because there's a lot of people's questions like, how do you do suggestions for yourself while you're doing self -hypnosis? Well, it's easy. It's not that hard. It's just a matter of practice. But yes, it, can, it will work right for that. Uh, is there, a, can they go to the Urban ERBI e -R -B -I e -R -B -I oh, and, and, um, uh, .com and get uh, reading material or links or connection or learn more about hypnosis? You can learn a lot about hypnosis there. And if, and if it's not there and you've got another question, all you've got to do is hit the contact button on there. And that email. And, and right then it comes come right to me. And I handle all the letters. And Regardless not, of where they are in the world. It makes no difference. You can, if you want to, you can call them on the telephone. Okay, give that but I, but I highly recommend you email them. Okay. It just, it's just easy. And give that email address again. It's Just go to urbanhypnosiscenter.com. E-R-V-I-N. Hypnosis Center. Dot com and you'll you'll get a contact link on there and just write me if you got a question about it, about it write because I I may or may not be able to do it but chances are I can uh, we're not doing it yet but we're, we're planning on starting to do actual hypnosis sessions by Skype so there's no reason and I've done it on the telephone I've done hypnosis sessions with with athletes that I've worked with pretty famous athletes that. I do that I've worked with before. I've done it on the telephone, but we're trying to expand off from using Skype because there's no, absolutely no reason why you couldn't do this. It would be perfectly safe. A person can't get stuck in hypnosis if the connection were to break for some reason or another. There's two options: you either pop out of hypnosis, which is probably what would, would happen. You either pop out of hypnosis, or you take a nap, and wake up normally like you always do. You cannot get stuck in this. So we could, we could have a mass hypnosis conducted on video and put it on our Redford Broadcast Network site and people go there and watch that for a preliminary or sure. as, a, as a general a kind of a that, general hypnosis. You're not getting into specifics. But no, you can do that. You could, in fact, you could do something that was, that was you could do something like self-confidence, self-esteem. I don't want to do that. I don't like waste hypnosis. If you're not working on anything else, work on self-confidence and self-esteem because nobody has too much. Nobody has too much. It's, but yeah, you could put something like that on there, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be any, any problem. The only, the only call we ought to have on that is to be in the same place where you're watching. I want to thank you very much for being with us on Core Concepts today. And uh, this is different and very interesting for people. and, and uh, 
would encourage you to go to uh, the urbanhypnosiscenter.com and uh, check out the website. And if you've got questions, to hit that contact button and uh, talk to uh, Richard Urban. This show is sponsored by the Institute of Applied Metaphysics and the Open Heart Spiritual Center. And uh, we're pleased that you could be with us today. Thanks very much for being with us on Core Concepts.